Welcome to the Moon and You podcast. My name is Susan Hart. Today I'm interviewing a lady by the name of Lily Hay. After experiencing firsthand the benefits of hypnotherapy and being inspired by her passion for helping women, Lily Hay started Hypnosis by Lily in 2020. Our conversation is around self-limiting beliefs, anxiety and trauma, and how hypnosis could be an effective tool to help unravel some of these issues that we carry throughout our life. The conversation has been recorded for YouTube and for podcast, and now I hope you enjoy this beautiful conversation between Lily and myself. Hello, everyone. It's lovely to have you here. I have a very special guest today. We met, this beautiful lady and I, we met on an online forum for business people wanting to go more in depth in their understanding of their own business needs and what's keeping them stuck. And I met this lady and she was so fascinating and I loved the topic that she was talking about. It's all about hypnosis. And before I introduce to you this beautiful lady, allow me first of all to acknowledge country. In the spirit of reconciliation, The Moon in You acknowledges the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia and their connections to land, sea and community. We pay our respect to their elders past and present and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders people today. My guest is Lily Hay, founder of Hypnosis by Lily. Welcome, Lily. Thank you so much for having me. What a beautiful introduction. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, look, it's my pleasure. I've been thinking about you for for a very long time and I'm so grateful that you have said yes to coming on to not only my podcast but on a visual for my YouTube channel. So thank you. I I can't wait to dive in. Um, Before we ask you any questions, I just want to share a bit about your bio if I can. After experiencing firsthand the benefits of hypnotherapy and being inspired by her passion for helping women, Lily Hay started Hypnosis by Lily in 2020, dedicated to helping women overcome their inner limiting beliefs. Lily has a special interest in issues of body image, disordered eating, self-esteem, confidence and anxieties. Lily, what a great mission. Ah, oh, that is just amazing. Oh, thank you. And it, it is absolutely my mission, you know, um, to help women to overcome those inner limiting beliefs is such a driver for me. And it's really nice to have that driver because it just sets the purpose and the tone for how you conduct business and how you go about everything. And I really do feel that, you know, um, so strongly within my business. So oh, I love it. You. And Today of all days, this is the, we're on the eve almost of the new moon in Aries. Yeah. And I was sharing with you just prior to the podcast that um, that my blog is all about self-limiting beliefs. And the whole blog is about when I was a child in 1976, I was 10 years old and ABBA had just released their, one of their songs, Money, Money, Money. Yeah. And if you really listen to the words, they're, they're outrageously bad, especially for a 10 year old listening to it. You know, I'll work all day, I'll work all night to pay the bills I have to pay. And she's looking for a man to pay everything. And she's like, and my questions were like, oh, do, do I have to find a man who's really, this is 10 years old, do I have to find a man who's really strong and, um, you know, um, wealthy in order for me to succeed in life? What bills do I have to pay? Oh, so full of anxieties because of this one song. Yeah, you know, the people now who are who have social media and oh. all the stuff that's coming to them now. Yeah, it's so, um, wild. Oh, it's wild. And so, so this this particular subject that you that your mission is, hangs its hat on is so endearing to me. So, thank you so much. Thank you. My first question to you is: What made you interested in hypnotherapy? Yes, yeah, such a good question. It isn't the sort of typical route, I suppose, for a 25-year-old girl. Um, I got into hypnotherapy when I was about 19, I think, 18, 19, after struggling with an eating disorder. So I had anorexia for about 
two years or so. And, you know, I saw psychologists uh, and nutritionists and, and those kinds of things, which were helpful to sort of an extent. But I think for me, I just, I needed a little bit deeper. And someone suggested to my mum, um, has Lily tried hypnotherapy? And I kind of just said yes, like immediately. I think I thought that I would just go in and get hypnotized and come out like a new person. So I was like, yeah, I'll do it. Quick fix. Great. Um, (laughs) But obviously that wasn't the case, but it was the thing that really got me good um, and allowed me to understand myself, you know, on a whole new level, um, introduce me to things like meditation and mindfulness and your subconscious mind. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, before I got into even doing hypnosis, my therapist said, you've got to do meditation. Like you need to do this every day for a week until we do it. Fantastic. That is so holistically um, good of that person to do that for you. Yeah, he was amazing. Because when I was um, 16, 17, I went down to six and a half stone, which was 45 kilos. Yeah. And I didn't realize, and I didn't eat anything. I didn't want to eat anything because I was in love with this guy, and I thought it was really ugly, and I didn't have. Well, I didn't know about anorexia. Mm. Um, the is it anorexia dysphoria? What's the full name of it? Nervosa. Nervosa. Thank you. Mm. Um, my mum was just worried because I was just skin and bone, but yeah. um, and she just you know didn't know what to do. But as, as soon as I as soon as I realised it as an adult that that's what I had, and that's probably where a lot of my anxieties I was sharing with you about my nail shredding yeah. um, had come from, and, and and I'm 55 now, and so if I don't, if I had 25 years ago you mm. to help me through my anxieties, I may not be the the woman that I am, like with with all my little fur balls now. Mm. I mean, yeah. it's, it's because you've learned you learn to live with your anxieties, you learn to live with them. Yeah, um, as time goes by. So this is why I just love you so much because oh. you know you can help so many women of your age to not have any of those problems moving forward, especially when menopause comes and yeah. you know all that sort of you yeah. know wonderful stuff that's waiting down the line for you. I know, I know, wonderful stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, I would always think like the one of the driving forces for me getting through my. Um, my anorexia was I would see all these older women, you know, um, you know, my mom and she's really like, she's in her 50. She's really coming into herself. And she's like, I feel like the most beautiful, comfortable, confident she's ever been. Like, it's just fantastic. And I would see all of these older women around me, you know, um, coming into their own. And it was so fantastic, but I had this driving force within me. That's like, I want to get there sooner than that. Yes. You know, I want to, I want to feel that comfort that, cause it's, I feel like it's these women that have had these realizations that it's like, no, that's not something that we need to be caring about. We need to embrace ourselves and they get to it at a certain point, but I almost wanted to just like speed that process up for myself because it looked amazing and it looked so enticing and I wanted to get there sooner. So yeah. yeah. Very wise, very wise. <laughs> Well, tell us a little bit about how hypnotherapy can help with our belief systems, like our limiting belief systems, which, from my understanding, a belief system is something that you have taken on Mm. within yourself Mm. that perhaps somebody else has laid it upon you as a child Mm. and you've accepted it as your own. Yeah. Yeah. That's one of my biggest ones. Yeah. Um, Or other people later on that you, you, you accepted and then, you haven't really questioned it as an adult Mm. um and that to me is is the biggest thing I've learned to get me through my menopause years when I realized Mm. if you looked at photographs of me in my 40s Mm. Lily I was the most I had almost black hair I had dull eyes Mm. and I was in pain and you know because when my mum passed away as well and there was Lots of things happening. My body was changing. And I had no idea what was going on. I thought, mm. it's just awful. I'm um, coming out the other side. I'm going grey, which is wonderful. I love beautiful. it. Beautiful. It's beautiful. I love it. It's so lovely. I love it. I love yeah. it. And like you, I want to help women get to this stage mm. at your age. Mm. Yeah, And it can yeah. be done. And people say, oh, they don't have life experience. You don't need life experience to be, to be, uh, to get your 
limiting, self-limiting beliefs out of it. And I'm not talking about all beliefs. I'm just talking those beliefs that are limiting. So yeah. what is what skill sets, oh, sorry, not skill sets, but how does hypnotherapy yeah. Yeah, retrain us? Totally. So you're completely right with limiting beliefs, um, you know, how they're formed. It happens when we're really young, typically. You know, it does happen when we're older as well, of course. But a lot of our, um, you know, really core limiting beliefs happen before we even have critical thinking. Um, so before we have the ability to question, you know, um, the people around us, what they do, um, things that they say. And a lot of it is just our very young minds misinterpreting things. Yeah, um, yeah, and taking it on as like a really core belief and then we never question it going forward. It becomes a part of our story. And the way that hypnosis works, um, it works on a few different levels. Um, so it can work um, a lot of the time I, through hypnosis, have people um, delve into some, some memories um, and to bring about uh, their adult's perspective and wisdom um, and to, you know, really um, almost give that younger inner child the beliefs that they needed at that time mm. um, to develop a really healthy belief system. Um, and because your subconscious mind is so powerful, it really doesn't know the difference between us doing that in hypnosis and us getting in a time machine and literally making those changes. So, oh, yes, yeah, it's it's super powerful. Um, and so we work with, you know, some really core cool memories that just come to you in hypnosis really easily. Mm. Um, but also, you know, there's a bit of parts theory. Um, so working with the parts of you that is, say, the anxiety, the the disordered eating, that kind of thing, and and understanding it for what it is, which is a protective mechanism, um, mm. and making some changes for it to, um, you know, perhaps protect you in a better, more self-serving, beneficial way. Mm. Um, so there's a few ways, and then I always give all of my clients a hypnotic recording to listen to after our session so that you have the session, but then you've got maintenance um, to remind your mind to pay those neural pathways every day to make those changes. So it works on a few different levels, but um, yeah, it's it's super effective. Mm, yes. Who did you learn from? I learned from, um, you might have heard of her. She's pretty um, well-known, Marissa Peer. Yeah, oh, I haven't done any hypnotherapy. I'm so new to it. Uh, yeah, no, yeah. it's a um, it's a school that's sort of that's based in the UK. Um, and nice. it, yeah, it's it's um a really great great way to learn. Um, and it's a different form of hypnosis that's not just you know feeding your subconscious mind with positive suggestions. It's dealing with stuff and then doing that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. it's wonderful. Yeah, I'm, I'm keen to learn more. I think it's great. I want to talk a little bit about business um, and being in business and being a woman in business sometimes can be, be tough. Yeah. I didn't start my business till I was 33. So, you know, and you're so young. I mean, I that's amazing. <laughs> uh, so tell me about your goals. What are some of your business goals that you have? Yeah, totally. It's You're very right. It's, it's scary um, being in business, you know. Sometimes I'm just like, oh, I wish I had a, a partner in business or something, but... Um, I do love it. So I guess my goals really for what I do is to be able to make it as accessible as possible, mm -hmm. um, to really bring hypnosis into the mainstream a little bit more. Um, and so through my one-on-one -on -one sessions, definitely, like I'll always have my one-on-one -on -one sessions, um, but through courses like the Confidence Academy and the membership, the Happy Hub, to really be able to extend it to as many people as possible for them to be able to feel the benefits um, and I suppose introduce them to ideas like mindfulness, the subconscious mind, all of those things, um, just to bring that as much into the mainstream as possible, I mm. think is that's probably my overarching goal um, and to just help as many people as I can. But I do, I do have really big goals for it um, mm. and my, oh, my yeah. sight's set quite high, yeah. yeah. One of the things that I find interesting about the the world of, what's the word? It's the healing modalities. 
So, mm. you know, I, in Australia, I like to call them, there's the allied health services, yeah. which most people are funded by, uh, but then things like hypnotherapy and massage, um, mm. aromatherapy, you know, all those, um, there's a line that's saying you have allied health and you have the healing Yes, health. yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. So with allied health, um, most of the people go to that because it's um, you know, mainstream and it's all scientific based and it's all you know, this is the right thing to do and everything else about and uh, over the other line seems to be viewed as a little bit woo woo. Yeah, I disagree with that completely because with all everything from allied health services started at some point in history with um, you know herbs. Yeah. And, ancient medicines and unfortunately they've just you know not that they've hijacked it we've improved because we're modern we're yeah. we've moved in the times but my personal belief is that there's room for both yeah there's room to work with holistic healers and allied health workers together totally. whether the government acknowledges that or not is irrelevant mm. but for me as a bookkeeper I've come across so many businesses yeah. um, in both spectrums and one of the things that I find about uh, people who work in the healing industry is that they don't know how to shine their light mm. they're frightened to shine their light they don't know how to get the word out there. They're usually one-man bands. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and so one of my purposes, one of my loves is to be able to shine a light, shine moonlight and sunlight yeah. on people like yourself so that people know where you are because there's somebody I know who's listening who will need you and and, and want you. So that's, that's my purpose for doing that's Amazing, that. yeah, yeah. But I also want to expand a little bit more on those two um, business ideas that you have. Well, they're not ideas. I understand one of them is already there. So you called it the Confidence Academy. Yes. I mean, first of all, tell us about that. What is that? How do we get involved in that? Yeah, it's um, it's super exciting. So it's my um, three-month course that I've created. I've already gone through one launch of it. Um, yeah so I've had one three month um course happen and it went really really well um oh. yeah so cool so it's basically um as I said a three month course and the first uh, month is on health and well-being um so we have a hypnosis session um one-on-one -on -one, and then you've got uh the recording and online content um, so just unblocking anything to do with health and well-being. So that can be habits. It can be, um, you know, the way you feel about your body, like anything. Mm -hmm. um, and then the second one is relationships. And the third one is career and abundance. Mm -hmm. um, so we do a one-on-one -on -one in each month. And then you've got online content and the recording to do. So, it's wow. not, yeah, it's just bringing back your confidence in all these areas, which has such a domino effect in your entire life. So, yeah, I'm really proud of it. Well, yeah, you should be. It's, congratulations. It's wonderful. So how do we how do we go on to the next one? Like when when is your next launch of the next program? Yeah. Or can anyone join now straight away? Yep. So you can join, um, you can sign up now through my website and the, the next launch is like it will start in May. So May, May is the first month. Yeah. Okay, May, June, and July through the winter. Yeah, May, June, July. Yeah, it's um, it's so, I love it. Yeah, it's so cool. Thank you. Well now, the other thing that you mentioned too is not launched yet. Yes. The Happy Hub. How yes, cool is the name? The Happy, Happy Hub. I yeah, I um, am really excited about that one too. So that is an online membership. Um, so I'm calling it um, you know, like the gym membership for your mind. It's got hypnosis in there. It's got a full hypnotherapy process for you to be able to work through on your own. Mm -hmm. Hypnosis recordings, um, a whole uh, library of meditations. Oh, um, really? Wow. Yeah. We've also got yoga, Pilates, recipes. Like it is jam-packed um, mm -hmm. with, you know, everything to just feed your mind really is, is and to strengthen neural pathways and yes. Yeah, so it's um it's really exciting too. It's um it's all coming together, which is cool. Good. Is that a subscription? Yes. A monthly subscription. A monthly oh. subscription. So thirty dollars a month. Oh, is that all? 
Yeah, $30 a month. Now, people who in Australia will know this, but does it include GST or is there going to be GST on top of that? (laughs) Includes GST. I love it. That's so good. That's very affordable. That's really good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, it's not. It's pretty. um, And that's how I want to make it as well. You know, I want to make help accessible for people. Yeah. And yeah, I am. I'm really proud of it. Thank you. That's wonderful. You know that I'm, I love the moon. Yes. I'm a moon lover. You are. Um, so I'm going to ask you, you may not have any answers to this, but um, I'd love to know your take on the moon. Is there any particular phase of the moon that you love or have you got any stories about um, about the moon? So, for example, like I, the full moon for me has always been important because mm. when I was a young woman, I bled on the full moon. So I would get, um, I should say, Menzies, moon time, you know, yep. period, whatever you like to call it. Yeah. I think the women call it men, uh, moon time now. So when I'm on my moon. That's cool. I love that. Isn't it? Yeah, lovely? I love it. So when I was on my moon, just prior to that, there will be a full moon. So on the 28th day of my cycle, the full moon will be there. Mm. And it would remind me gently that, hey, Sue, don't be a bitch. <laughs> Calm down. And I would see it as I turned the corner to my home, I would see it and I'd go, oh, that's why I've had such a shitty day. Yeah. Now why I feel so bad. And so she was, so Chandra, which is the Indian name for the moon, which is she, um, I call her Chandra, she would shine her light on me and, and it would calm me down and anchor me into the moment. And so when I'd come home, I'd go, hi, okay, I'm not very happy today, you know, I'm just back my periods. So I just want yeah. to, you know, I love you all, but I'm just, I'm just done. I'm spent. Yeah. I haven't got anything yeah. else to give. And everybody would that. know. And so this communication was important in, in a household. Yeah. Um, especially with your partner. And if I don't have children, but if you have children, it's important that they know as well. Yeah. Um, and really? so she so she was the catalyst also for my the app that I made, which is the Moon and You app, which is a tracker, so that you know people can say, well, when do you get to? You might bleed on the new moon, full moon, first quarter, whatever it is. And and it's just an anchor. So that's my story. So that's do you cool. have a you don't talk about your periods or anything, but do you have a story <laughs> that might inspire us in regards to how you use the moon in any way? Yeah, it's so interesting. Um, I don't think I don't have a a specific story, but I've always felt like this very special connection to the moon that I don't really have the words to explain. But I remember when I was younger, um, I was always really scared of the dark. I was a kid that hated sleeping alone. Um, I really, I yeah, I was just scared of the dark. Um, would have to sleep with the light on. When we were out at night, I would feel quite scared. But I just remember specific times looking up and seeing the moon and feeling safe. And it brought just this sense of calm to me, um, I guess through its beauty, specifically a full moon. I just find it incredibly beautiful, as I'm sure everyone does. Mm. Um, But, yeah, it always brought me a sense of, like, safety and calm and peace and it still does. And it's only when um, I began sort of thinking about this after meeting you that I've actually like made that connection, that maybe that's why I've always felt sort of that, you know, I don't know, love for the moon. But I think it just does, yeah, bring me a sense of like peace mm-hmm. and calm. It's like this shining light that, I don't know, is almost like that light in your bedroom that sort of makes you feel safe. It's mm-hmm. kind of that thing. Yeah. It's so lovely. I love that because it's very ancestral, I think, because the moon throughout the, the ages has mm. been has been one of those um, astro- um, astrological bodies that, you know, have illuminated fields for harvesting, illuminated, you know, for, for festivities and stuff. And so we have such human beings have such a relationship with the moon. But I, I also, as a child, I wanted to become an astronaut. Cool. Yeah. So when I was thirteen, I really wanted to, and I went to the to the high school. You know, I call it back then in the day, um, the careers advisor. Yeah. 
He was actually the English teacher and he was male. So he wasn't really a career advisor. Yeah. He was yeah. just a guy who said, yes, come along. And when <laughs> I said, look, I really want to be an astronaut, he, went, he laughed at me and he said, oh, so you can't be an astronaut. You're a female. You, have, you wear glasses and you're too short. And, and I was left with this, such sadness. I'm going, well, that's, I really wanted to do it because I followed the Russian Sputnik plans, you know, the Apollo 13 and all the different, I did all my school um, studies on that. So I was a I was a real science nerd when it came. Comes yeah. To, um, he, got, he could have said, so you can become an astronaut, you can come, become an astronomer or a scientist. Yeah. yeah. No. No. Not those days, no. Oh, so what, what happened to me was I, yeah, so I have this um, science head for the moon and, mm. and can talk to you about, well, what is this? It's a satellite, basically, yeah. and it controls the tides. It does, because there's so much water on Earth, but it does control the tides and it helps with the seasons and all that sort of stuff. Whether the moon actually, there's no scientific proof to say that the moon actually affects us as human beings, mm. um, as in the water and the stuff. But some women and some men believe that, and that's okay. I honour all teachings of the moon. Yeah. Um, I also honour those people who actually have have trained as, uh, as astronomers yeah. who know exactly about it. But I think as individual humans, as you've just shared with us, we each have a story and a connection both ancestral, ancestrally through our line mm. going back whenever and if you believe in reincarnation or any karmic principles, we also have that tie. You know, some people don't believe in that and that's okay. But I believe that we've been here before, my soul's been here before many, many times and mm. that's why we have relationships with the moon. But um, that's so, so yeah, so having this relationship is so important and mm. and it, it grounds us as being human beings and it takes away the fear of death and the fear of not belonging because we are part of this earth. We are mm. born from the earth. So yep. when we look up at the night sky, we are part of it all. We aren't separate, you know, mm. as a lot of people would have us believe that we're yep. separate. Yeah. We're above everything as human beings. We don't. We are intricately part of the whole. Yeah, and you feel that, I guess. You know, there's, there's, it's um, like you say, you know, hard to explain scientifically, and but you feel it. And I think that's sort of how you know. You know, you feel that connection to to the earth, to the moon, to you know. And I think that's kind of what you've got to go by. Yeah, you know how you feel. Yeah, and getting back to um, sort of bringing it back to full circle to for hypnotherapy and for you. Just as people um, would would say, oh, the moon is only this. It's a rock. Yes. It's formed, blah, blah, blah. It has asteroids in it, blah, blah. People would think that. And I think they miss out on so much mm. spiritualism and so much connection with our higher self in that regards. People also who just believe in allied health services who, who would probably not appreciate hypnotherapy, they miss out on the opportunity yeah. to perhaps heal a couple of things within their own life. Yeah. And so that's why you should be open to everything. I think so. I think so. And, yeah, yeah and I guess it's, um, you know, if there's things that aren't working for you, you know, like for me it was psych wasn't really working for me, then, you know, give yourself the permission to explore things that might work for you yeah absolutely but can't get to self-limiting the beliefs if you only if you believe only that modern medicine is going to work yes then only modern medicine will work yeah because that's what you believe mm. and nothing yeah. that happens will happen but and if you exactly. believe that only this certain thing will work then modern medicine might not work for you you know like the placebo effect yeah i mean the placebo effect is real yeah you could take a pill believing that it's going to do such and such and such yeah and just somehow miraculously, and it has been shown scientifically that you will get better. Yep. It's in certain research yeah. Studies, yeah. It's okay. the power of your subconscious mind is phenomenal. Um, yeah. yeah. And and there is like I think hypnotherapy sometimes is sometimes is seen as a bit woo-woo or you know, whatever. Um, but it's one hundred percent science, like <laughs> all of it. So it's um it's just so much backing it. And yeah. um, I think if if someone is scientifically minded, just have a look. Um, you know, just do some Googling and, and you'll see the you'll see the research. Yeah. 
I think the modality of hypnotherapy is rising. It's the same like massage when they realised that massage was in that, you know, like, oh, what are you doing with massage? But now they realise that massaging is so good for you. Yep. Sports people do it, you know. People who have exactly. got cancer do it to help with their relaxation and and where a, stress, a stressless body actually um, helps with recovery and and even like, you know, Florence Nightingale, she was the one who discovered about sunlight. Sunlight is good for the recovery period for those men who were in the World War One. It was World War One, World War One, World War Two. Can't remember. Sorry, I'll have to research that for you guys. Sorry, but um, yeah. So she was the one who said, get them out into the sunlight, in the sunshine, it helps yeah. the medical help. That's so yeah. interesting. Yeah, it's great. My darling friend, I'm going to wrap up. Um, thank you so much for this conversation. It's been so wonderful. Thank you so much for having me. I really, um, I've loved it. Thank you. Yeah. And I just wanted to point out, people on the podcast won't be able to see this, but our viewers on YouTube will. We've got the same cupboard. I know. It's so cute. <laughs> Fantastic furniture. <laughs> Shout out to Fantastic Furniture. You are pretty uh, good goods. <laughs> but I think it was like 70 bucks. Yeah. So cheap, yeah. So cheap. Like, oh, Hubby had to sort of, you know, he, he hurt his wrist because he had to sort of build it for me, but that's okay. <laughs> Worth it. <laughs> so, dear listener, thank you so much, and dear watcher, thank you for being here today. Um, Lily's uh, information, Lily Hayes, uh, information will be on the podcast and the, um, the YouTube channel just below. You can actually get all the information there. I'm actually going to sign up for the May launch exciting and do this three months so for those of you who want to join me just come along it's like it's 30 bucks a month it's you know it's 90 dollars for the three months i mean that's a dress and you have you have so much information so i'll be there and i'm looking forward to learning so much from you thank you lily thank you thank you okay 